I think the current uh, image of the current generation, in a way, uh, they look for something what you call cool. Um, they don't think that engineering, as they understand it, is a cool career to go for. It's more of a geeky thing. It's more of um, not that what they really find exciting and enjoyable, probably. In a way, I was shocked in one way to find that this perception is, is in the UK. I come from the Middle East and science engineering, uh, especially engineering, is a highly uh, valued, it's a very prestigious career you can f go for if you're a boy or a girl. If you go for engineering, you must be really, really successful and clever and intelligent. Um, the h top career you can go for is medicine in the Middle East. The second is engineering. And that as well showed into the uh, number of years you have to study at university. So you study for seven years if you're doing medicine, you study for five years if you're doing uh, engineering, four years if you're doing anything else. So that hierarchy of studies uh, shows the importance of these careers and it is it is very respected and valued career which I couldn't find here in the UK. It's looked at in a way if you hear about an engineer is the guy who comes to your house and fixes your dishwasher or washing machine or looks at your central heating. I think there needs to be some change of how teachers teach um, mm -hmm. as well as certain expressions I've heard like oh you don't have to like maths. Uh, one of the teachers at my girls schools uh, who is a physicist, got a PhD in physics, came into the class and told them uh, I'm a physicist but I never liked it and he's coming to teach these kids physics. How are they gonna, they're, they're teenagers and they're very much affected of their opinions in a way with, of the teachers opinions and the parents opinions and especially the peer pressure as well so you need to be careful of what you say so you won't drive them away from physics or maths and make them like these subjects in in one way or the other relate these subjects to their daily life why do they need physics what does it make them understand why do they need uh, maths in a way, in, in their daily life, never mind taking physics or maths as a career in a way for further studies and higher education and so on. On behalf of the Institute for Materials Research and FEMA, I present for the award of Joint Doctor of Philosophy, Amy Sarah Gandhi. <laughs> Science and engineering is an unusual a choice for young women in the UK especially um, and uh, as, as mentioned before it's about the stereotyping of what careers girls can choose, what boys can choose and the image, the sort of old-fashioned image of what engineering and science is and we need more awareness of the varied uh, types of careers that uh, young people can go for and I think there is something I've not really mentioned throughout which is the media, the influence of the media, the influence of the soaps and on bro TV programs and radio programs and so on. Um, okay, the society somehow managed to change the image of being a doctor and there are so many girls now becoming doctors. Uh, and look on, on the different soaps and uh, programs of uh, on, on the TV that um, uh, give an image of girls and women being doctors and doing such careers and that I think influenced young people, especially women, into going into medicine. Take for example forensic science because there are a couple of programs and soaps on the on TV about forensic science and there is women forensic scientists. Now forensic science is quite um, fashionable to go for and there are many girls are doing such studies. And I think we need a positive image of female engineers in soaps. They can do such a career, uh, they can balance their lives. It's not that hard job to do, it is an interesting and enjoyable job. So I think the media as well as the overall society from childhood, schools, careers, higher education, 
the industry as well. We need to address all these stages to make it more effective. And when we do the hard work to get more girls into engineering and sciences, we want them to stay in the industry because many of the girls who do go in the industry find it a bit more, okay, uh, a man world that they can't live in somehow and they leave. So we want them to do the studies and carry on in their careers as well and stay there. I think we can change a lot and that's many of the things, the projects we're involved with, like the So What Do Engineers uh, Do, like the Insight Programme, like when I go out to schools and I especially target girls' schools uh, to talk to them about what I do and one of the questions they say, do you enjoy your job? Um, I say yes. Um, is it boring? Uh, I say no, it's not boring, I enjoy it and the most thing uh, about it, it's varied, it's, it's exciting. Every day I do something different. There is no, in a way, oh, I'm going to do the same thing again. Uh, and because we're dealing with engineering, you're dealing with technology, it's always moving on. It's always there is something in you you need to learn. So that makes it more challenging, more exciting, more interesting. So we need to, to tell young people about all this information, about the different types of things they can do. And, okay, it's not a boring job. It's not uh, like a routine thing, you get to do so many things, you get to travel, you get to meet lots of new people, in, in interesting people, um, and it, it, it's just exciting. I think it simply stops the stereotyping at young age. So, tell boys and girls you can do anything, okay? so. Girls won't grow up when they are eight, nine years old saying, I want to be a hairdresser or a nurse or, and boys have to go into the army and so. So if we don't have the stereotyping, if we don't have the teaching methods that are, or the expressions like, don't like math, don't like physics, don't go into such uncool careers, um, I think we, we would solve the problem.